Welcome to the virtual experience of Lab 8 investigation. The question that we address as a part of Lab 8 is, how much hydrogen peroxide is in bleach? This lab investigation involves a series of redox reactions in order to determine the concentration of hydrogen peroxide in a bleach sample. For this experiment, students are expected to write a formal lab report. In this video, you will be introduced with the primary goals of the experiment, the experimental setup, the chemistry behind it, a sample experiment for both parts of the lab, and the post-lab calculations. In the end, a set of guidelines will be laid out for writing the report. So let's get started. Bleach is commonly used to remove stains and to make clothes whiter. Bleach is only as effective as its oxidizing or bleaching agent. Some bleaches, like Clorox, use the hypochlorite ion as the active ingredient or oxidizing agent. However, non-chlorine bleaches are known to be gentler for clothes and safer for the environment than chlorine bleaches. The bleach that will be used in this experiment contains hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, as the active ingredient. Hydrogen peroxide is less toxic to the environment, but works slower than chlorine bleaches. This experiment investigates how oxidation reduction, that is, redox reactions along with titration, can be used to determine the mass percentage of hydrogen peroxide in a sample of bleach. In part 1, a solution of potassium permanganate KMnO4 will be standardized using solid samples of iron 2 ammonium sulfate hexahydrate called FAS for simplicity. Why do we need this step? It is because KMnO4 is hygroscopic, meaning that water will adsorb to the surface of the solid KMnO4 that was used to create the reagent solution. Hence, when the mass of KMnO4 used is recorded, the mass of an unknown quantity of water is also included, meaning any molarity calculations derived from this mass are inaccurate. Therefore, a primary standard that is not hygroscopic, like FAS, is used to make solutions for which accurate molarities can be obtained. For the experiment, approximately 0.25 to 0.30 gram of standard solid FAS, the exact mass of which is recorded, must be dissolved in about 10 milliliters of distilled water exactly 2 milliliters of 9 molarity sulfuric acid and 2 drops of 6 molarity phosphoric acid in a 250 milliliters beaker. The burette containing KMnO4 must be placed directly above the big beaker. Now the titration can be started and as the endpoint approaches, a pink color will appear at the point where the KMnO4 mixes with the beaker contents. This color will disappear while stirring. When the color persists for more than 30 seconds after stirring, the endpoint has been reached. The initial and the final burette readings will be used for the calculation. The net ionic equation for the reaction involved during the titration has been provided. In this equation, MnO4 minus ions are reduced to Mn2 plus, while Fe2 plus ions are oxidized to Fe3 plus ions. The hydronium ions are supplied by making the solution acidic by adding sulfuric acid in excess to the beaker. This equation also shows that for every mole of permanganate, 5 moles of iron 2 are required. Thus, from the mass of FAS used and from the volume of KMnO4 required for the titration, the molarity of the KMnO4 solution can be calculated using stoichiometry. In this titration, KMnO4 is a self-indicator, which can monitor the concentration of iron ions and thus the progress of the titration to identify the endpoint. 
The permanganate ion has a deep purple color. So the first drop of KMnO4 that is added past the equivalence point will cause the entire solution to turn pale pink, indicating the titration has reached the endpoint. Why do we need phosphoric acid, you might wonder? Phosphoric acid is used to decolorize iron in the reaction so that it does not complicate the process of identifying the pale pink color at the endpoint. Potassium ammonium sulfate ions are the spectator ions here. This is the data table which should be included in the lab report results section. This includes the mass of FAS in grams, the initial and the final burette reading of KMnO4 in milliliters, the total volume of KMnO4 added from the burette to the beaker in milliliters, and finally, the average molarity of KMnO4. You can calculate the number of moles of KMnO4 from the number of moles of FAS used by taking the 1 is to 5 molar ratio into consideration. Then, a simple division of the number of moles of KMnO4 by the volume used in liters gives the concentration of KMnO4. A data table with experimental values for two trials will be provided at the end of the sample experiment video. Um, so we're going to be doing part one right now. So I already have everything set up. In this beaker that's stirring, we have 0.299 grams of iron, iron sulfate hexahydrate with two drops of this phosphoric acid and then two milliliters of this nine milliliter sulfuric acid. So you guys have performed tri titrations before. We have a starting volume of 20.43 milliliters and we're going to slowly add drops until the titration is complete. Okay, so at the end of this titration, the solution should look similar to the titrations you have seen before, so that light pink color purple color. Uh, right now it's getting pretty close as you can tell when the potassium permanganate is being added that color is uh, staying in the solution for a little bit longer each time. Okay and so we have that pink color so now the titration is complete. And so our final volume is going to be 36.64. Okay, so for our calculations for this lab, we have parts one and part two on the board. For part one, we have two trials, um, trial one, trial two. We have given you the answer for trial one, and we are leaving this for you to decide in trial two. Uh, but we can see that we have 0.299 grams of our FAS, and we have volume one, volume two, and a delta volume. With this information, we can have all the information we need to calculate this concentration of KMnO4. Um, this calculation is super similar to what you've done before for standardizing sodium hydroxide a ton of times this semester already, except for our reaction is a bit different. So when we hit that um, equivalence point, we don't have a one-to-one -one mole ratio between our acid and our base anymore. We actually have a five-to-one mole ratio. So this calculation should look really similar, except for I gotta add this in here one mole over five moles. So I can plug in my grams of FAS, divide that by the molecular weight, that'll give me moles. Then I have this five to one mole ratio, and so I divide by five, and that gives me moles of potassium per manganate. If I want the concentration of that, it's super easy, right? I take those moles and I divide it by the liters of KMnO4 that I use during the titration. So that is 16.21 milliliters. And so I'm gonna put that in liters, 0.01621. Boom, boom, and I get a value of 0 0.00938. That goes right here. We also have data for you right here, but you can calculate that on your own. Average these two numbers, and that'll give you a, a number of KMnO4 that you can use in your calculations over here. In part two, the bleach will be analyzed for its hydrogen peroxide content. 
For this, about 8 to 10 drops of bleach needs to be masked out and combined in a solution of about 10 milliliters distilled water and 2 milliliters of 9 molarity sulfuric acid. The bleach sample can then be titrated with the standardized KMnO4 solution until the pale pink color is noticed. Thus, the mass of hydrogen peroxide present in the bleach sample can be determined from the volume of KMnO4 used in the titration and the molarity of KMnO4 determined from part 1. The mass percentage of hydrogen peroxide in the bleach is then determined by dividing the mass of hydrogen peroxide present by the mass of bleach used in the experiment. The net ionic equation for the reaction has been provided. As you can see, hydrogen peroxide serves as the reducing agent for this process because hydrogen peroxide is oxidized to form oxygen. KMnO4 once again acts as the oxidizing agent as permanganate ions are reduced to manganese 2 plus ions. Also notice that 5 moles of hydrogen peroxide are required for every 2 moles of potassium permanganate that are present. Did you notice that phosphoric acid is no longer needed in this part? Because there are no iron ions involved. This is the data table for part 2. This includes the mass of bleach in grams, the initial and final burette reading of KMnO4, the total volume of KMnO4 added from the burette to the beaker in milliliters, the calculated mass of hydrogen peroxide in grams, the mass percentage of hydrogen peroxide in bleach, and finally, the average mass percentage of hydrogen peroxide in bleach. In the post lab calculation for this part, the number of moles of KMnO4 can be calculated by multiplying the volume used in liters to the average concentration of KMnO4 from part 1. Then you can calculate the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide from the number of moles of potassium permanganate used by taking the 5 is to 2 mole ratio into consideration. Thus, the mass of hydrogen peroxide present in the bleach sample can be determined by multiplying its number of moles to its molar mass. The mass percentage of hydrogen peroxide in the bleach is then determined by dividing the mass of hydrogen peroxide in grams by the mass of bleach in grams used in the experiment. A data table with the experimental values will be provided at the end of the sample experiment video. Part two, which is determining um, the concentration of bleach. So we have potassium permanganate in here, just like before, and then down here we have 0.299 grams of that bleach, and then two milliliters of sulfuric acid. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did before, simply start the titration with the now known concentration this potassium or magnate solution. Yeah. Alright, so the titration's now complete. We have that pink color again. And the final volume is 39. Um, and that's the end for part two. For part two, um, we have very similar results, except our goal is to get the percent peroxide in the bleach, right? And so we have the exact same bit of data. We have grams of bleach, we have volumes, we have delta volume, and then we're going to finish by solving for that percent hydrocarbon peroxide. And so again, our reaction is very similar to what we saw over here. We have a five to two mole ratio. So again, calculations look very similar, but we gotta keep these mole ratios in mind. So here, if I start with my volume of potassium permanganate, 11.8, and I multiply that times the concentration that I found over here, and I have moles per liter, 
That'll give me moles of potassium permanganate. I take that five to two mole ratio into account, and this gives me 0.000277 moles of peroxide. Um, and then if I wanna get um, grams from that, I just take those moles and I multiply that by the molecular weight. Grams over moles, the moles cancel out, and I'm left with 0.00941 grams H2O2. Getting this percentage is now super, super simple because I know exactly how many grams of H2O2 I have, and I weighed out exactly 0.299 grams of bleach. So I just divide these numbers, multiply by 100, and I get 3.15%. And again, here's your data. You can calculate that one on your own. Here is a general rubric for you to follow while writing the formal report. Start by introducing the key concepts used in this experiment, followed by a detailed experimental section. Present the results in a systematic manner. Please make sure that you write proper units every time. The discussion section is the true reflection of what has been accomplished in this lab investigation. Try to address the questions posed here. Also, mention the possible errors involved like FAS did not dissolve completely before the titration was done, overshot the endpoint with a dark pink color, bubbles in burette, incorrect mass of bleach, splashing from stir bar, etc. Finally, conclude by suggesting some improvements of the current procedure of finding out the peroxide percentage in bleach and whether there is a real life application of this method. Hope you enjoy writing the report and seeing the video.